like, comment, and subscribe. Hi folks, Dave with DBS Tech Talk, and today we are going to talk about the Meze Ray Solo. Uh, Meze has been on my uh, radar for a long time. I've noticed them and heard them at various audio meets and um, at Oxpona and uh, different audio shows, and I've really enjoyed what I've heard, but I've never been able to get one in for review. And they've always had a uniqueness to their sound. You know, they usually are a little bit warmer, you know, really well, well detailed and clear. They just have that warmthness, that fun factor, um, in my opinion. And so when somebody recommended a couple months ago that I check out the uh, Meze Ray Penta, I looked them up and I looked at the budget that I had for IEMs at the time. And I saw the price tag of the Penta and I was like, whoa, uh, not quite yet. Um, and then I saw the Ray Solo on the website and I was just like, hmm, interesting. They have this unified piston motion technology. That sounds interesting. It doesn't have any wires on the diaphragm. It's supposed to not get distortion and it's supposed to do a really clear and fun uh, bass. And you know, these look good. What's the price tag? All oh, these prices in my budget. And so, uh, when the time became, of, when the funds became available, I brought them in and I, I must say, this is a good purchase. <laughs> um, I'm really impressed. So they come in this nice little care, uh, box. It has some pictures on it, shows you the IEM. And then it has, uh, some signatures of, from our sticker from Meze, which is really hard to see on camera. And then it says designed and developed in Rom Romania. So this is a Romanian uh, IEM. And uh, then on the back, it'll give you a little bit of information regarding the unified piston motion technology. These are uh, 16 ohms, 105 decibels of sensitivity. So they're really easy to uh, drive. They have a frequency response of 18 Hertz to 22 kilohertz. And Let's open up the box. So when you open it up, you're greeted uh, with some more information regarding the driver. And there you can see that the Meze doesn't have any wires and normal ones have wires going on the diaphragm. Some explanations of the info. And there are your IEMs. You take off the little tray and your IEMs are just sitting in there. Just absolutely beautiful. We'll take a look at that here in a moment. You do get some paperwork and some warranty information, how to clean them, how to take care of them, that type of stuff. And you get this really nice carrying case and you also get a little um, cable wrap. And the cable wrap says Meze on it. Very nice. So the carrying case is hard shell, zippered, says Meze on it right there. Pretty nice touch, uh, full leather, but it's a nicely built carrying case. And when you open that up here, you get a little bed to put your IEM in and some carrying pockets. Also inside the bag are two bags of tips. And normally, you know, one will be foam one will be silicone but both of these are silicone and one bag is completely full of dual flange by flange tips and the other one is singles and i was like okay i think meze is trying to give a point here that you need to do, use by flange tips with these and they don't want you to use foams they want you to use silicones i was like oh fine i'll, I'll give it a i'll give it a shot more about that in a moment. And then as you take your IEMs off, you come across an extremely nice cable, really thin, light. Get some branding right here on your 90 degree. And a little plastic clear and a 3.5. It just it's just sharp looking. Then you go to a clear chin, uh, a split and chin cinch slider. 
And then there are your IEMs. Polished stainless, just absolutely gorgeous. They have a nice little touch in which where your MMCX is, which is actually very well connected. It comes off nice and easy. You got red there. And then if you take your tip off, they have red on the nozzle. Same thing on the other side, except it's blue. So you know exactly which one is red and which one is, <laughs> which one's right and which one's left. And then as you can see, your connectors are gold. And that MMCX just connects real easy. These are beautifully crafted. I absolutely love them. You get your little M Meze design right there. And if this is the way everything's made in Romania with, you can tell they put a lot of time and effort in them. And then I might have to buy some more Romanian products as this is just craziness, the craftsmanship and the beauty. You can tell they spent a lot of time designing it and thinking about it. So they're a little bit on the chunky side, not too bad. They do have a little bit of heft, um, but it, it's very comfortable um, in the ear. And when you have them in your hand, you know that you have your IEMs with you, but they're not um, super heavy and weighty. They have a nice angle size, decent slant to it. And the only roll complaint that I have is the ear hooks are a little stiff and a little hard to conform to your ears. But once you get them in place, they're fine. So they just slip right in to the ear and they fit extremely well for me. They have like the perfect angle for my ear shape. They go right in, seal, and no problems with comfort. These I can wear for a long time. The ear hooks are just about right in the positions for me. And uh, yeah, turn a fan on here and it's not the greatest isolating of outside noises. It's probably about somewhere in the 60% range of being isolated. So uh, trains, planes, subways, things like that, probably not the, the best isolating of sound for that setting, but a medium to quiet office setting, uh, walking around uh, downtown, things like that, they'll work just fine taking a walk in the park and stuff like that. But they are extremely comfy and beautifully built. I would give these a 10 out of 10 for build quality and comfort. They're just, these are one of my favorite comfort IEMs of any price point that I have reviewed. Okay, tips. Now, I did try various third-party tips, uh, spin fits, RHAs, uh, newbie foams, Dakoni bullet foams, Dakoni wireless foams, uh, spiral dots, and some other generic ones that came off of, of various IEMs I have around. And absolutely not one of the third-party tips pleased me. It either made the base too boomy and removed details, made things sound muddy, uh, hazy, veiled, all kinds of, of weird stuff went on with third party tips. I always came back to the double flange wide bore tip that is included in the box. It just had the best sound for me. I got the best comfort, the best seal for base and it just brought out the, the proper details and it never really seemed to be too harsh or too bright in any way it just these were the best fit for me now your experience may be different but 
all sound uh, notations and definitions and descriptions or whatever you want to call it uh, are done with the biflange tip. <clears throat> How do they sound? They have a fun, lukewarm, neutral sound signature. You know, lukewarm? What? What do you mean by that? Well, they're not extremely dark and warm um, sounding like a lot of mezes can be. They're a little bit more on the brighter side. Um, and then they have a forward mids and lower treble region with some rolled off uh, treble. These have a very nice mild V-shape, but you would almost think of it more at times of not being a V at all. Um, you would think that it's a little bit more mids forward than being a V. Base. <laughs> Base on the Meze. Uh, that UPM United Piston Motion Technology really comes out and shows itself during the uh, bass presentations on these. You play some quality bass tracks and you will get some really fun, thumpy bass, uh, impactful, energetic, clear, detailed, has nice speed and nice resolution to it. The bass is awesome on these. Now it's not bass head heavy. Uh, it's um, Bassheads may find it to be a little bit lacking. Now, if you're a basshead who likes a good quality detail in the bass, these may, may give it to you. But if you're just looking for that oh, just mm, thump and pound your head and give you a headache um, bass, these won't give that to you. Sub bass, they do tend to lose a little bit of impact. Um, they have a nice detail and clarity in the sub bass just doesn't have a lot of thump and impact. Mid bass and upper bass is where it has a little bit more uh, girth to it and a little more body and impact, um, but it never overpowers the rest of the mix, never overpowers the bass at all. It's very well done. I really, really enjoy the bass on these. It's fun, but yet it's controlled. It's detailed, but yet it has enough of that energy to keep me toe tapping. On to the mids. The mids have a little bit of a warmerness, a sweetness to it. Some, some way you say a honey touch. It just has this body to it and it, just, it is forward, but yet it's not overpowering and overwhelming the other areas of the mix. That just sounds alive and sounds present. And I really enjoy that. Uh, vocals come out very nicely, crispy, natural. You have good tones and they have, they're very well controlled. You have a very nice presence when it comes to the vocals. Uh, one little quibble, and uh, if you're timbre picky, if you're, if you, if you pick up on metallic timbre um, real easy these do show that um, they they're not like a focal um, timbre but they do have a little bit of a metallic um, sound to them at times and it can be a little present um, in violins pianos um, things like those type of instruments um, some woodwinds also um, portray it just a little bit um, so it, it's not offensive to me but some that are a little more timbre uh, picky may find the metallic timbre um, to be off-putting when you go into upper mids and lower treble it climbs nicely 4k to about 8k there's a nice peak to it especially right around 5k and it, it brings forth the, 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 the vocal presentation a little bit, brings forward the details in, but it's not assertive, it's not aggressive, it's not shouty, uh, but it does have a, a little bit more of a 
a harshness to it at times. It can come across, especially on bad recordings, you'll really notice it, or on songs that are brighter in nature. Uh, you'll notice it. Also, you notice it more on some sources that are, are a little bit brighter. As you climb, but it, it, again, it's not offensive. It's just got a little bit of a bite to it at times. And then as you go into the treble, the treble rolls off about 10K and down. Um, it's not a cliff or anything like that. It just kind of rolls and, and goes out. Extends decently, but it's not... These aren't uh, treble warblers in any way. Um, it's a little bit on the lukewarm side when it comes to treble. It's not a dark treble and it's not a recessed treble. It just has a more mellow tone to it on the upper treble uh, reaches. Detail is very well there. Clarity is very well and it's very well controlled and you get nice air. It's just not as present uh, as um, some may want. But I don't believe that they come across as being boring, mainly because of that upper mids and lower treble region is more present. Soundstage is unique. Uh, they have more of a helmet um, feel to the soundstage. It's not super wide. It does feel a little bit at, at your ear level. Um, it doesn't force it into your head, but it doesn't feel like it's really expansive. But what it does uniquely is inside of that helmet that you have going around your head is that it's precise and isolated and separated out. Um, they do a very good job of taking each instrument and placing it, taking each vocal and placing it where it should be and giving you just this placement that is you can really feel things traveling around it's a very immersive sound stage even though it's a little bit on the small side i really enjoyed these for gaming i enjoyed them for watching videos and movies and um, especially for um, music that is of like jazz uh, new age um, ambient sounds um, things like that they really sound excellent they do a really good job of just placement uh, I really enjoyed listening to Van Gelis and all his weird stuff that he does in his music. Uh, it just these are a great match for that. If you're if you love listening to Van Gelis uh, or Yanni, uh, both of them do a really good job of placement. You'll see Horikara also sounds excellent on the Meze Ray solo. The sourcing um, and amping is a little interesting now being 16 ohms 105 decibels they're extremely easy to drive i found that you could overpower them a lot if you give them too much juice they will become shouty in the treble um, and the bass will become a little bit uncontrolled so um, using them on a desktop really wasn't something that i did often uh, they sounded okay um, on some of the gear like the 789 did a decent job on it but made them a little bit on the cold and analytical side wasn't as pleasant um, LCX CTH too much power uh, Gishelli Labs uh, Archel 2 too much power Archel 1 way too much power JDS Lab Adam didn't really play with that too well uh, the monolith THX AAA 788 played well had a nice tone to it and sounded controlled uh, didn't try it on any tubes so desktop, they, they, they were okay, uh, but these are a portable um, usage. If you use your phone, if you use a DAP, they work fantastic. They sound amazing on the Hi-Fi Min Mega Mini. has a little bit of a warmth to it, and it just, it's a romantic, chilled out, um, relaxing sound for them. The Pioneer XDP30R was another really good match for the um, Meze Ray solos. I just found that it had plenty of power. I was at about 50% of volume at all times or less. And uh, no matter what I played on, it sounded fantastic. Dongle wise, if you want to use your phones, uh, using the X-Duo Link sounded the best out of my opinion. And then the next best was the ADV access port light this also sounds extremely well has a little bit more warmth than the x duo and it was kind of like a hi-fi and mega mini it was just fun and just enjoyable relaxing the 
Razer DAC amp I did not enjoy too much. Uh, it didn't match well with the Ray Solo. It added in a bunch of uh, glare into the treble and just made things sound a hurtful to the ears. I uh, started to get some ear bleed using that. One thing that if you do want to use it on your desktop, you may want to invest in a IFI ear buddy. Uh, this works extremely well for IEMs of 16 ohms or less. And uh, it just kind of tones out the overpowering desktop amplifiers sometimes. And it does play extremely well. So the Meze Audio Ray Solos. $250. They get a thumbs up from me. Uh, I really enjoy these. The build quality is top notch uh, with the polished stainless steel and they have just the right amount of angle and just build and they just slip in your ears and feel extremely well. The wire is a little, mm, it's doable. Um, you can replace wires. I didn't see a reason to replace the cable, but uh, you may want to try something different I definitely recommend the Ray Solo um, by Meze and I have enjoyed them very much uh, it's a different sound signature than the norm and uh, has that lukewarm fun neutral sound and you get all the details all the clarity that you want and yet it has enough energy to um, keep you entertained but yet it does it in a relaxed and fun way the Meze Ray Solos it's been Dave with DBS Tech Talk thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next video speaking of next video somewhere on the screen is going to be a subscription link and a notification bell if you haven't already please check those off check out the links down below for information regarding the Meze Ray solos and also uh, for tracks that were used to test these on playlists on Deezer and Tidal. Also for links on other things like Patreon, PayPal, Discord, you name it, it's down there. Thanks. Have yourself a great day and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.